So those are the objectives. I'm going to talk about the terms, the degree, and end behavior. What does the word poly mean? Multiple or many? Yep, multiple or many. So a polynomial is just some kind of an expression with... Now I put many in quotations because many could mean even one term. One term is considered a polynomial. I know it's not many terms, but roughly translated, a polynomial is something with many terms. Now there are some more strict requirements. It can't have any negative exponents. It can't have any fraction exponents, those sorts of things. That's not something we need to really worry about. Right now, you just need to know a polynomial is something with many terms. You could probably pick out a term if I gave you a polynomial, but you need to have a good understanding of what a term actually is. So write that down. The term of a polynomial A term could be just a single number with no variable. That's, that's a term. Or number connected to a variable. Together that makes one term. If it's a number and a variable, that's one term. Now, I'm using <coughs> some word. I should probably use a little bit better word. What's a number called in front of a variable? You guys know it. Come on. It starts with a C. Coefficient. I should probably change this to coefficient just to be more mathy. Coefficient. That's also a term. If you have a coefficient in a variable, that's a term. So let's take a look at this expression. We saw this in the warm-up. Write that expression down. x squared plus 9x plus 14. The first problems on your homework is going to ask you three things, okay? One of which is to state the number of terms. How many terms do you see here? What are you thinking? Here are two different numbers. What are you thinking? How many terms? Terms, let me tell you this. Terms of a polynomial are separated by plus or minus signs. Anything that's separated by plus or minus, that makes separate terms. There's three terms. Okay. We have an x squared, that's a term, 9x is a term, and 14 is a term. Okay. This may or may not show up on the test, but some terms have special names. So uh, let's, just so you're at least aware, if you ever see these on a test, this term right here, the 14, it doesn't have a variable, correct? Anything that has no variable that's just a number is called a constant. It's called a constant. So in your book or on a test, if they ask you what is the constant, it's just a number with no variable. This term right here in the middle, it's a combination of a coefficient and a variable, but in particular, the variable has an exponent of 1. Anything, any any variable that has an exponent of 1 is called linear. So that would be called a linear term. Again, this may or may not show up on the test, but if you're reading through a homework or your textbook and they say linear term, that's what they mean. So explain it back to me. What's the difference between the linear term and the constant? Constant has no variable. And the linear term has an exponent of 1, exactly, in the variable. Good. Now, what about this term right here? What are the differences? Explain to me what the differences are between that term and the linear term. What do you think? It has power 2. And it doesn't appear to have a coefficient, but it really does have a coefficient of 1. 
any exponent of 2 on a variable has a special name. It starts with the Q quadratic, yeah. Looks like some yeah, quadratic. Those are the most common special names. There are other names for higher terms, like an x to the third or x to the fourth, but you don't really need to know that. Quadratic, linear, constant, those are the most basic. Your homework is going to ask you to identify the number of terms. Do you feel confident doing that? The number of terms. Your homework is also going to ask you to identify what's called the degree. That's really easy to identify, very easy to identify. The degree is just the highest exponent. That's all it is. Really easy to find. Well, actually, I need to clarify this. Um, oh, wow, how should I clarify this? It has to be connected to an exponent or to a variable. I mean, it's the highest exponent of the variable, not of just a constant. Yeah. That, that brings up a good point. Take a look at question number one. I don't want you to start working too much in your homework right now. But take a look at question one. If you were just to glance at that, you might think, hey, there's three terms. Is that correct? Yeah. There are three terms, but what's the problem? There's problems. Isn't there a 4x and a 1x? You need to combine that into 5x. So technically, how many terms are there? Two. There's two. And then they ask you for the degree. Now, you got to be careful here. What's the degree of question number one? It's degree one. Because 5x really means 5x to the first power, so it's degree one. Students and teachers, I am sorry for the interruption. We try not to do this, but there is an announcement I need to make. Um, you guys, the next, the next thing your homework asks for on question one, or all of those questions, is, do you see how it says write it in standard form? All standard form is, I'm not even going to write this on here because it's pretty easy to remember, all standard form is the term with the highest exponent comes first, and then it's in descending order. You have the next highest exponent, and then the next highest exponent. The constant comes at the end. So yes or no, is this expression right here in standard form? Yes. Not all of your problems are in standard form. Okay? So those are the three things you answer on questions 1 through 21. Okay? Here's... Let me pause this for a second. Well, here we go. This next part is going to be kind of hard to take notes on because it's more visual. So I just want you to put everything down. Put your pencil down. Put everything away. Look up here on the screen. The next part of the homework, if you look at starting on number 20, what does it say, 22? Do you see how the directions say determine end behavior? They're talking about the graph. Now, don't freak out. I'm not asking you to graph these. We haven't learned that yet. Okay, so you're not going to have to graph them. And you don't have to graph them to determine end behavior. Here's what I mean. You guys recognize this graph? y equals, or f of x equals x squared. It's just a parabola, right? Okay. What you need to notice is, first of all, the exponent is 2, right? What they mean by end of behavior is where the ends of the graph are heading. This end of the graph right here, would you classify that as going up or down? What about this end of the graph? Up. Oh, now, <laughs> there are different ways of describing end behavior. Our book has chosen a really weird way, I think. This would be completely wrong if it were at college level, but we're going to use it because it's in our book. And they would describe the end behavior as up and up. They would just say, you just say up and up. So that means the left side is going up and the right side is going up. Okay, and that's all you've got to say. Oh, cool. Okay, now, but what if it's going up? Well, what if I change, you see how it has a one right here? What if I change A to negative one? 
So now you'd say down and down. Okay. Now the, the point is though, could you describe the end behavior without looking at the graph, with only looking at the equation? How would you know? If it's a positive leading coefficient, it goes up and up. If it was a negative leading coefficient, it goes down and down. Now, that's not quite it. Okay? What if I start changing the exponent? Let me change it back to a positive coefficient of 1. What if I change the exponent to 3? What happens to the end behavior? Now the end behavior is down. You would classify this as down and up. Now that's important, the order. You're not going to say up, down. Why not? That would be the other way around. You always go from left to right. The left side is going down, the right side is going up, so you say down and then up. You clear on that? Now, what characteristics of the equation let you know that it's going to have this end behavior and not the other end behavior that we just saw? The exponent. Okay. What do you think is going to happen if I change it to 4, an exponent of 4? What, what are some of the differences we might expect? Maybe the other way up down? Possibly. Let's see what happens. Is this exactly the same as x squared? Is it similar though? What's different about it? It's more flat. It's not quite as wide. But the important thing is the end behavior. We don't care really about here the vertex here. The end behavior. Is it the same as x squared or different? Same as x squared, right? What if I change it to x to the fifth, or sorry, x to the six? What happened? Same end behavior. What if we went all the way to x to the eight? So what's the similarities now in all of the equations? Even numbers have the same end behavior. Are they always going up, up? Always? What if the number in front's negative? And it goes down, down. The point is they have the same end behaviors. Either down, down, or up, up. If the exponent is even. Okay? Now let me change this back to positive. All of the odd exponents, like 7, or 5, or 3, what's all the same about those? Down and up. Okay? Unless it's negative, then it's up, down. So what do you remember about odd exponents? It's always opposite end behavior. What you need to be able to see that, though, is from the equation, not from the graph. So take a look at number 22. What's the highest exponent? So you would classify this as a degree 4, right? Now, just kind of getting a basic picture in your mind of this graph, what's the end behavior? Up, up. How do you know it's not down, down? The number of press positive, exactly. What about number 23? 23. First of all, what's the degree? The degree is 3. So that means opposite end behavior. One goes up, one goes down. We just got to figure out which one it is. Take a look at the number in front of x to the third. It's a negative 3. So it's going to look kind of like this. There's a negative number in front, and it's a third degree. So it's up, and then down. Does everybody understand what you're supposed to do on this set of homework? Okay, so let's take a minute then, try to do as many of these as you can. 22 through 30, just describe the end behavior. You're going to use phrases like up, up, or down, down, or up, down. Yeah. You go with the highest degree. The highest exponent determines the degree. Okay, use arrows, Twenty-five. 
Many don't even know the big direction. Can we draw arrows? We can do arrows. It's dead. For those that, that want to write something in their notes before as a reference, okay, let's just draw some quick pictures. So draw a graph here. If it's x squared or x to the 4 or x to the 6 or whatever it is, anything with an even exponent and no negative in front, the graph's going to look something like this. It's just going to both be going in the same direction. What if it's negative x squared, or negative x to the fourth, or negative x to the sixth, or so on and so on? What does that graph look like? Down. Both going down, down. Now you understand these are just rough sketches. The graphs do change slightly when the exponent increases. They get skinnier. But anyway. What about x to the third, x to the fifth, x to the seventh? It's like, it looks something like this, where it's down on the left, but up on the right. And, and similarly, if it's negative x to the third, or negative x to the fifth, or negative x to the seventh, any of those would be the exact opposite of this one, it'd be up and down. By just a table. So this is our next little set of notes determining the degree from table. All right. Come on in. This is Nora. Have it come sit right over here. So are you, are you here for the entire year? Are you going to be here for the entire year? Cool. So this is the worksheet that we're working on. We're talking about. Okay, we got to get through this again. The bell's going to ring here real quick. So, take a look and as quickly as you can write this table down right here. Come on now, move it. Just draw this first table right here. Now, just by glancing at this, it's not really obvious what kind of polynomial this is. Specifically the degree. Okay? But this right here check the differences. That's just a quick, easy way to determine the degree. It is real quick, and it's really easy. First, check the x differences. Is it the same difference between each of the x numbers? Yeah. It's a difference of one. Once you determine that, it's actually more important that you check the differences here. What's the difference between four and one? The difference is three. What's the difference between one and zero? One. The difference between, between zero and one? is 1, here we have a difference of 3, and here we have a difference of 5. This is what's called the first difference. This is called the first difference. The whole thing, all of these numbers, all of these numbers are called the first difference. Okay? Yes or no, are all of the first differences the same? They're not all the same. What that means is this is not a first degree polynomial because the first differences aren't the same. So now we go on to the second difference. We have to check the second difference. The difference here? Two. 
Okay, th this is kind of strange because this is where the vertex would be. So this, the difference there really is zero. Like that's kind of an odd thing. We we kind of discount that. But what's the difference here? Two. Two. What's the difference here? Two. Two. What do you notice about all the second differences? So the second difference became the same number. That right there tells you the type of degree this is. This would be a second degree polynomial. Okay. Now we don't really have time to write out all the rest of these, but I want you to watch real quick before the bell rings. So put your pencils down. What's the difference here and here? Come on, quick. Not quite. What's the difference there? 19. What's the difference here? 7. The difference here? 1. The difference there? 1. The difference here? 7. The difference here? Is this a first degree polynomial? No. What's the difference here? 12. What's the difference here? 6. That one really doesn't count because that's where the vertex is, but what's the difference here? 6. And what's the difference there? Are the second differences the same? No. So we go to the third difference. What's the difference here? Six. What's the difference here? Six. Third differences are the same? So it's a third degree polynomial. Okay. Well, before the bell rings, are we clear on that? Yeah. So on question 34 then, you're going to have to check the differences. Okay. Um, just keep a hold of all those in for you anyway, just for practice. I'll borrow this for one second. Turn it over to the back. Quick, 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 quick. Number 36 and 37, specifically 36. When you describe the degree of number 36, would you say it's an even degree polynomial or an odd degree polynomial? Look carefully. It's even. How do we know it's even? They're both going in the same direction. Now, is it a negative number in front or a positive number in front? And that's what it, that's what you have to say. It's an even degree polynomial with a negative leading coefficient. Okay? Look at 37. The end behaviors are going in different directions. What does that mean about the degree? The degree is odd. Okay. And specifically, is it a negative in front or a positive in front? It would be positive because it's going down first and then up. That would be a positive leading coefficient. Okay. So whatever we didn't get through today will be your guys' homework. Okay.